What's going on guys? It's Nick here, back with another fantasy football video. Today, we're going to be talking about streaming both defense and quarterback. question I get a lot is people don't want to screw it up. They hear me say all the time that the best strategy, in my opinion, when you're dealing with both the defense and the quarterback position is to stream them. It's where the best value is, but people don't want to screw it up. They don't want to take a quarterback that they shouldn't be streaming. They don't know how to stream quarterback. One thing I will tell you is if you follow our podcast, if you subscribe to the website, we are going to be telling you who to pick up each week. We're going to be telling you who the best streaming options are. I'm going to explain in this video how it works, but if you follow us throughout the season, you're going to know exactly who to play. So a little bit of backstory, what happened last season using this. Um, I did the RB0 strategy video, and then I said... I'm probably going to stream quarterback in this league, so I took a bunch of wide receivers early, mid rounds or running backs, and then late I took Cousins. So for that league, I drafted Cousins after maybe, I don't know, five or six weeks, I dropped him, I added Mariota, because this is what happens in leagues. People say, well, I have to draft a quarterback in those middle rounds because my league is different than your league. Everyone drafts quarterbacks in my league, and everyone's got like two or three quarterbacks. That's nice for the start. But once bye weeks happen, I guarantee you, people will drop quarterbacks. It's just going to happen. And they're probably going to drop quarterbacks who have difficult schedules. You have to look at which quarterbacks have an easier later schedule. I know Rivers will probably be dropped in a lot of leagues once bye weeks hit. Just because he's got a difficult early schedule, but an easy later schedule. But people are going to be dropped regardless. So all you have to do is make it through that first part. So I had Cousins, I dropped him, I picked up Mariota, who I probably should have kept the rest of the season. But I wanted to keep going. I added uh, Kaepernick for a few weeks, and then I finished the season with Simeon. And looking back, you say, okay, well, that, that probably wasn't ideal. I mean, Cap and Simeon didn't do that good. But if you added up all of their performances, I didn't even hit. I mean, I probably should have just kept Mariota. So I didn't even hit on, like, perfect additions to my team. Even with a two-point performance... From Kaepernick one week, I don't remember which week it was, but he had two points. It was when they played like the uh, the Bears or something. It was like snowing out. It was quarterback six. And that's what I get at with streaming quarterback. It's okay, you could you could hit on a mid-round quarterback finishes as five or four or three. Maybe you, you draft um, Wilson. I really like Wilson this year. Maybe he goes up to quarterback three. And you're like, well, that was a great pick. It beats out your six. It, technically, yes. But you spent, what, a, a sixth or seventh round pick? On Wilson, whereas I'm spending probably a 12th or 13th round pick getting quarterback six. So I, I really don't advocate taking guys in the maybe like the eighth, like the eighth round. I mean, you can do it if you see a value. Like I like Cousins and I like Mariota. I'm fine taking them at that point. But when you start taking like Big Ben and you start taking guys that are just okay and they're probably going to finish as like a back end one or a high end two you might as well just stream the position and get quarterback six because that's what i've seen historically i know the fantasy footballers did one two years ago they got quarterback six like it's just you typically are gonna get around 280 270 to 290 i guess would be your range maybe you stink it up you go 260 260 to 290 is probably the range you're gonna be in at the end of the year putting all these together even if like, I think it was around 280-something with Kaepernick posting a 2. So that's all you have to do. You have to look at matchups, and that's what we're going to do in this video. Look at matchups and just see how easy it is. So after doing a decent amount of mock drafts, this is basically what we're looking at as to what gets drafted. Um, it kind of finishes around the Andy Dalton range, but there are plenty of, plenty of drafts where um, the Eli and Dalton... Uh, go undrafted and you finish at like that quarterback 15 depends on how big your league size is i'm assuming a 12 team league but typically you're not going to get into the palmer kaepernick is actually being drafted in leagues cutler bortles watson smith you're not getting into that range it's typically stopping at like tyrod wentz dalton so that's roughly where you're going to be in to start um since obviously you're going to draft a quarterback um, somewhere in like the 13th round. So you're going to be looking in like Eli, Dalton, Wentz, Tyrod, Palmer. Somewhere in that range. Looking at the schedule, the best option as long as Odell 
as long as the injury doesn't hold him out any time, is probably Eli. He plays at Dallas, so that's probably going to be um, a game where Dallas doesn't have that great of a defense. You can probably start with Eli. But let's look at free agency. This is what a typical free agency is going to look like in a lot of leagues. Even if you don't get Eli, you could actually start off with Bradford. Plays the Saints in week one. So let's say, let's say just like horrible, horrible things happen. Everyone's taking like four quarterbacks. There's no way you're in a normal 12 team league, one quarterback league. No way you're taking, you're, you're not going to have a chance to draft Bradford in like the 13th round. So, worst case scenario, you could start him, but I'm going to assume you took like Eli in a late round and you got at Dallas. We go to week two. Let's say you don't want Eli anymore playing Detroit. You could still do it. You could still have Eli at Detroit. But let's say, actually it's home, uh, home against Detroit. But let's say you don't want that. You could actually have Flacco. Flacco is playing Cleveland in week two. You could have Palmer. Palmer actually gets to play the Colts in the second week. So, okay, now you're you're pretty solid on the first two weeks. Let's move to week three. Palmer gets to play Dallas. So you could actually keep Palmer if you wanted him against the Colts. Because remember, Dallas does not have that good of a defense. You could play Cutler. If Cutler's doing fine, Cutler gets to play the Jets in Week 3. That's not an elite passing defense. They're a good run defense. But that might actually help out Palmer if they can't get... Um, or not Palmer. <laughs> that could actually help out Cutler if they can't get a Jai going and he has to air it out. Also in Week 3, let's say that Kaiser's the quarterback at that point. Maybe he's not. I think he should be to start. But let's say he is in Week 3. He gets to play the Colts. So you go, all right, I'll take that matchup. So those are guys you could stream. Week four, Palmer again gets to play the 49ers. So just, just think about Palmer, guys. I mean, week two, Colts. Week three, Cowboys. Week four, 49ers. That's that's not that difficult of a schedule. Uh, Cutler gets the Saints. So that's pretty nice to have. Um, again, we're assuming Cutler's at least looks fine for those picks. Week five, if Kaiser's the quarterback, then he plays the Jets. Another good matchup. So you just walk through that. And at that point, we've made it to week six, streaming quarterback. Um, at that point, maybe someone came out of nowhere and is doing great, you can add. But also, typically, week five, week six, that's when those teams with two or three quarterbacks tend to drop their guy. That's when you're going to look on free agency. You're going to see Rivers. You're going to see Dak. You're going to see Tyrod. You're going to see a lot of guys that they took three quarterbacks. And they're like, wait a minute. Why do I have three quarterbacks? Maybe it was the auto picker that got the three quarterbacks. But once bye weeks happen, they're like, okay, well, this guy's just dead weight right now. I'm not starting him. Um, my quarterbacks don't really get injured anyways. I don't know why I took so many. Um, I need a free agent because I'm not even starting a wide receiver this week. I have to drop him. And then you add the guy for a longer stretch. So all you have to do really is make it through these first five weeks. Again, every week in the podcast, we're going to be talking about streaming options. If you're a premium member of the website, we're going to have articles that go out that deal with this. If you're part of the private chat, we're going to be talking about that a ton. So there's plenty of opportunity for you guys to figure out who you should be streaming during these weeks. And I honestly think it's a very viable option. You're going to find someone on free agency that is dropped or just comes out of nowhere. It happens every single year. Every year there's a top five quarterback that was just undrafted. And the value you're getting with essentially a 12th or 13th round pick, whatever you chose to pick your first option for streaming is, that that's huge, getting a top five option that late. So that's the end of the quarterback portion. Um, we're going to talk about defense next. And, I mean, there really isn't much to talk about. A lot of you know you should be taking defense kicker in the last two rounds, um, essentially because, like, it's even worse than quarterback that every single year there's a top there's top five there's probably two top five defenses they're just on free agency you go in like week nine half the time and the number two defense is on free agency like it's absolutely insane but even just looking um just looking at the first three weeks we've got you could take the bucks this is just a list of just a typical free agency because there's no way teams are taking a bunch of defenses bucks at miami you could play you could play steelers at cleveland 
play Falcons at Chicago. You could play Bills facing the Jets. That's probably one people should jump on at home. Bills at home is a great defense typically, um, and they know their um, division rivals very well. Um, the Jets just look pathetic on offense. You go to week two, the Ravens play in Cleveland. Chargers get Miami. The Bucks, um, or excuse me, Ravens are home against Cleveland. Chargers home against Miami. Bucks home against Chicago. Raiders home against the Jets. So, I mean, you could honestly just pick on the Jets. Like, I do that a lot. You could pick on the Jets first three weeks. You could say, I'm going to take the Bills at home against the Jets. I'm going to take, I'm going to then drop the Bills. And remember, we don't claim for streaming defense because you don't waste the waiver claim. You just drop. So, you drop them in like, I don't know, on Tuesday or whenever. It would be Wednesday. Whenever the claims is done. Day after that. Drop them, pick up the Raiders playing home against the Jets. Next week, drop them, pick up the Dolphins, who are at Jets. If you don't happen to get that, you could have the Ravens at Jacksonville in Week 3, Steelers at Chicago. So every single week, there's an option for you. Um, this is typically not best utilized if you have a budget system. Um, although it would be very cheap to do, it's not typically ideal. Um, remember, never claim. Uh, or if there's like a limit. Like, you can't stream anything if you have a limit on your additions, and it's a small limit. So, obviously, I'm talking about normal settings. Um, but even if you have a budget, it's not going to cost you really anything to stream defense. It's just that that little cost adds up towards the end. So, I wouldn't recommend it. So, this is really only for if you're in a league that's, like, move to last after claim. Like, that's all the leagues I do. And I think, personally, it's the best system. Um, but even like if you're in a reverse claim, so like last place gets a claim, um, just in you're in a claim system, this is best. You're not actually using the claim, but you're just adding people for free off of free agency because it's just so easy to do. Uh, it allows you to pick your quarterback super late, your defense super late, obviously your kicker in the last round, and then just load up on skill position players in the early, middle, and I guess early late rounds, beginning of the late rounds. That, my friends, is the end of this video. Hope you did enjoy. If you did, how about we hit that like button? Let's aim for 100 likes in this video. How about you subscribe if you're new? Seven videos a week up until the regular season. Then the podcast starts. But that's the end of this one. Thanks for watching.